Can a carbureted Mini run just as well as a fuel injected Mini? Let's find out in today's episode. So I've had this single point car here in front of me uh, for about a couple weeks now and I've been working on it. It came in with uh, running problems. The plugs were all black, uh, vacuum leaks, etc. So I went through and fixed everything and I've been out driving this thing and this car performs as you expect from a fuel injected car. It runs really smoothly and cleanly and nicely. But then it dawned on me that, wait a minute, my carbureted car performs just as nicely as this car. And the proof I have is in my spark plugs. I'm going to take a set out of my car and I'll take these out and I'll compare the two and we'll see which one looks better or worse. But before I get there, I want to talk about, about carburetors and fuel injection and how this is the same as this, minus a few details. So let's get started. What I have here in front of me is an HS4. It's an inch and a half across. And the similarities are great between these two systems, even though they look totally different. So for starters, obviously they both take fuel. Now that system there, fuel pump runs in. There's a fuel pressure regulator on the fuel rail, which is right here, regulates the amount of fuel coming in. Inside here, there's a float, which does the same job. And the computer sends a signal to the injector to send pulses of fuel into the injection system and then down the throats and, and into the engine. Well, how does this control the fueling? Well, it's, it's got a program. It's got microchips and RAM and it, it runs a program to tell the engine and the fuel injection system what to do. So how does it get its information? Well, there's an air intake temperature sensor on the bottom here, this green one here. There's a coolant temperature sensor in the manifold down there. So there's two sensors of input. It then measures the movement of the throttle. This is the throttle linkage here. There is a throttle position sensor on the side here, which measures that motion. Uh, there's a stepper motor, which changes the idle speed. And then there's the vacuum line, which runs to the bottom of the computer, which tells it a uh, manifold vacuum. And with the, those pieces of information, it tells the injector what to do. Now, with the vacuum in particular, it tells the distributor Basically, it controls timing with the vacuum information coming out of here. So this particular distributor in this car has no internal weights. There's no advanced system. It's just a dummy distribution box. The computer does all the work and fires the coil at the appropriate timing based on its programming. But how does it all work? Well, if it's cold, air is cold, intake manifold's cold, it pumps out more fuel for, say, like the first start of the day, spits out a bunch of extra fuel, it raises the idle, keeps the idles high, high RPMs while it's warming up, basically. And then as the coolant temperature sensor starts registering temperature, then it starts backing off its fueling, it lowers the idle down, and it just sits at about 950 RPMs uh, once everything's warmed up. Now when you're running at high speed, again, the computer is controlling the ignition system, the advance timing, whether you're on the throttle or off the throttle, vacuum advance, no vacuum advance, uh, all that gets controlled by here. Well. This thing does the same damn thing. There's a vacuum port here, which runs to the distributor, and it controls how the distributor operates on vacuum. Now, th this is a uh, ported vacuum. There's a difference in, in vacuum control, but this has ported. Uh, throttle position sensor, well, that's just the butterfly and your right foot. The choke, the warm-up system, is just this. It operates a linkage. You, you have to control it, but you know, it does the same thing, adds fuel, takes fuel away. When you stomp on the throttle, the piston here rises against the spring and the oil and controls uh, the enrichment when you accelerate. And the program is the needle. The needle has all the information that this carburetor needs to provide fuel into the engine. So in essence, the needle is the program and the carburetor is essentially a vacuum computer. The carburetor does not care what engine it's attached to. In fact, you could hook this up to a shop vac and it would still provide fueling based on the needle and the airflow coming through here and the position of the damper. So this is essentially a vacuum computer and that's electronic computer. The two of them operate the exact same way. So why is the fuel injection considered a better way to go? Well, it controls all the variables on the fly based on the sensor inputs. So for instance, throttle positions adjust automatically based on temperature and, and engine load. 
Whereas this, this doesn't have a way of controlling that other than you pulling the choke out a little bit or pushing on the throttle a little bit. So there's one aspect. Um, again, it controls the warm up, reduces your emissions. It doesn't suffer from, you know, linkage issues like this one does where they get stuck or rusted. That one can get stuck. Um, it can have issues with rust, but it's less prone to it. But at the end of the day, the goal of this car and the goal of any carbureted car is to provide the fueling that's necessary for the engine to run at its most efficient point and provide fueling under acceleration conditions, which is different than cruising fueling. So how do I know that a carbureted car like this can run as clean as a fuel injected car like this? Well, one way to look is at the condition of the spark plugs. When you're running clean and efficient, like in, in fuel injection, you'll have very nice white electrodes with light sooty um, grounding arcs. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull a plug out of this car and I'll show it to you now. All right, let's just get number one out here. There's what your typical fuel injection spark plug would look like. Nice, clean, lightly powdery, good ignition burn. So, knowing that this is what this plug looks like, I'll go ahead and check out my red car over there, and I'll get the plugs out of that, and we'll compare it. I do want to point out that uh, this system is prone to wear, particularly the throttle shafts. You'll get air leaks here and that will just cause issues. Um, same thing with the jet, like the, the jet will get stuck or this linkage will get stuck and it won't be, it won't work properly. So yes, these can be, these can be finicky, especially when they wear out. Um, you know, there are different parts for the, the damper here that can be changed for, you know, better performance or worse performance, uh, the oil, the springs, etc., can be changed. So um, a lot of parts in here can be modified and either make the car run better or worse. But yeah, wear and tear will, will certainly affect the, the performance of this car. Also temperature. Um, on these fixed jet carburetors, uh, if you have a nice hot and cold summery day, you can have a 15% change in fueling just by the heat of the day affecting the carburetor. So that's one of the problems with a carbureted car. Whereas this, uh, there's nothing to change. You can't change any of the parts up there realistically because it's running on a, a program. Um, but they are also affected. So if the vacuum lines break going to the manifold, the computer won't know what to do and it'll cause the feeling to go awry. If any of the sensors fail, coolant temperature particularly, um, the feeling will go off. So again, there, there are pieces that are important for the computer to know what to do about the feeling. So they're both, they're both affected, but uh, this system here is affected much less by weather and temperature as the carbureted car is. So uh, in terms of reliability or just ease of use, yeah, of course, an injection car is going to be um, the way to go. But that's not to say that you can't you can't work with one of these. And there are later carburetors that have wax stat system, which is a temperature compensation device for the fuel. And then, of course, the the later HIF series has uh, the bimetallic strip built into the float bowl for temperature compensation as well. So later versions of these carburetors are better. But they still won't compete against this in terms of um, temperature stability, in terms of fueling. So that is a plus for the fuel injection. The downside is all this technology you see sitting in this engine bay, whereas this car with this carburetor has no technology, so less, less parts to fail, but more things to pay attention to as they wear out. So if you're someone who can monitor and pay attention, then yeah, carbureted car would be great. If you're someone who can't be bothered, then go with the fuel injection car. So here's my uh, 1971 Canadian Market Mini. It's running the same HS4 carburetor I just showed you a minute ago. Um, the ignition system here is the same power as in that fuel injection car over there. It runs a 0.8 ohm coil with a high power module, low resistance wires. But remember, here's the spark plug for the injection car. 
I'll just set it here. And I'm going to take out cylinder number one. Spark plug. And we'll compare the two. Well, look at that. Identical. This plug on my right, about 200 miles. This plug on my left is about 1,500 miles. Mixed city and highway use, same thing on this. So that's the proof. If this carbureted car wasn't running as efficient as the fuel injected car, the spark plugs wouldn't look identical. And that's how I know that you can get a carbureted car to run as efficiently as a fuel injected car. With proper tuning and testing and adjusting, these can run really smoothly and nicely and efficiently. You can pass MOT or any EPA standards you have here in the United States with a good, good carburetor tuning and ignition power. Uh, you, can get, you can get them to pass the tests, no problem. But there you go. Fuel injected, carbureted. You guys thought this video was interesting or helpful? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.